All right, I think uh, quite a few have joined in. Uh, once again, apologize everyone for sending the last minute reminder. So I had to wait in for 10 to 15 minutes for more people to join in. I guess that's quite a few of you in here. As people get to keep joining, I'm sure they will have the recording available as early as Monday on our YouTube channel. So the topic for today's session, as we're all seeing in front of your screen, disbursement stay mystified. It's a one hour of CPD session. Uh, the link for attendance has been posted. It will be posted in every 10, 15 minutes interval. It's, a, it's purely a professionalism CPD credits for an hour not substantiative CPD. Uh, ULA never gives substantiative CPD, so just FYI for the ones who regularly attend ULA webinars would know this, that we only give professional some CPD credits. Now, almost last day of the month, of the quarter, in fact, um, we, we have almost three CPD sessions this month. Uh, it's like had five Fridays, and uh, we've had uh, one nice topic last week about Law Society annual report. I hope everyone had submitted your annual report. If not, you have few hours left. Please make the best use of time once you're done with this webinar to go back and, and submit your form. Um, and I wish you all the very best for your annual report filing in case you've already done. Great. If not, Please be gentle and make sure to do it today. Great. So this is being a CPD session. We are going to stick to the agenda. Uh, and we're going to try and see as much as possible to get some things clear and straight about disbursements. Now, it's a very ambiguous topic. Um, a lot of us have too many questions about disbursements, uh, trying to understand whether, you know, it's, is it something that is incurred on behalf of the client or is my office expenses also called disbursements? Um, because I'm basically disbursing some money out of my account, whoever it is for, myself or the client. Now understand what are the basics of disbursements. We're gonna see it in here today. What exactly, our disbursements, how do you manage them, whether should I do it out of my trust or my general, oh, if I do out of my general, how am I able to recover it from the client? Is it that difficult to recover it from my client? Um, how do I showcase to them that, hey, this is the amount I've spent on behalf of you and I need to get this back and stuff like that. So there's so many, other things as part of law society expectations that comes into play uh, when it comes to disbursement. So uh, let's be very careful about reviewing these regulations that's laid out by law society. So we are also going to see what are the different types of disbursements. Now this could vary between every practice. Each practice would, each area of practice would have different types of disbursement. So every lawyer or a paralegal would have, one would have an application fee, one would have a process server fee, one would have just photocopies or bank charges. Real estate disbursements are totally different. Now, how do I record them all in a system that I'm using? Could be you law, could be anything else, but what goes behind these disbursements in order for me to be able to keep up, keep a track of it. Okay, so that's uh, what we're going to be seeing today as part of the agenda. And uh, straight away jumping into what are disbursements. So um, I know legal fee. Uh, so legal fee is something that would that we are charging on behalf, uh, not on behalf to the clients for the work done, and uh, we are receiving it as a payment into trust or general, and then either transferring money from trust or receiving the payment as client payment into the general account. So while that is not something that is being reimbursed, but it is being addressed to you for the services rendered, the disbursement is something that is basically an expense that is incurred on behalf of your client by your law office. 
obviously you need to record these in your books as if you have paid on behalf of your client and later on show it on the invoice so that you can recover it as an expense if you have money in the trust given to you as a retainer while you're invoicing your client for the legal fee obviously you will add in the disbursement so legal fee plus disbursement can be shown on the invoice together or you choose to do an invoice separately it's totally up to you however is your style of invoicing but in order to get a rec or get or recover the expense reimbursed from the client you need to record this disbursement in the books to ensure that the invoice has a record of this disbursement the amount spent how did you spend for it and other things now it is just sometimes that people might not get a retainer they wouldn't have a trust account they might finish the work and get the money into the general account which which is normal right because there are people who have trust account they get a retainer they start the work they invoice for the legal fee and the disbursements and then you know once the invoice is done you transfer the money from trust to general with whatever is lying in there including disbursement but for the ones who do, doesn't have trust you are spending the money from general and uh, getting back the money into general so which is also need to be recorded in your books of account so that's that differences and a little bit of clarity is needed in there that's what we're going to see in the upcoming slides so what are the necessary steps or what are the key steps to keep in mind while you are doing a disbursement like i said the first point for you to remember is whether you are dispersing something from trust directly or whether you're dispersing it out of general and then getting the money into the general account directly or is it a transfer from trust to general so there are only three ways number one there is money in trust you directly pay out of trust like could be a court filing fee could be a an application fee but there's one thing that you have to remember while you are dispersing something out of trust directly there is no room for a profit margin in there that is a key thing to remember if someone is dispersing out of the trust account directly so record the disbursement as it is when it was paid who it was paid for what is the reason basically the description and you know whether the method of payment the reference number everything is the same but whether the bank is the trust account you see there or the general account is what needs to be decided for which my tip here is follow your bank or follow the money when you follow the bank or the money you know how this disbursement was paid how did i pay for this application fee okay i paid it from my trust okay then directly into your u law program or into whichever software you're using punch it in as paid from trust so pay out of trust from bank statement or your online copy that you see is matched with your program as you have paid out of trust likewise if it is paid out of general but the money is lying in trust you can just invoice along with the legal fee or separately and move the money from trust to the general to reimburse for yourself that is called the expense recovery you're recovering the expense that you have paid for on behalf of your client from your general account it could be your business credit card personal credit card general account whatever it is it's anything that is not trust is termed as general respectively 
of course, business credit card and personal credit card, they all form part of general, right? Owner's pocket and other things. So I'm not getting into too many details about that, but anything that's not trust is termed as general for our understanding over here right now. So once it is paid out of general, but you have money sitting in trust, invoice your client saying that, hey, there was an application fee that I paid out of general, and here is the money that I'm moving from trust to the general after I've invoiced you. Basically, get paid for that expense. So when you are paying from general, what is the advantage? One, you can mark up in general if necessary. So you decide what portion to invoice and when to send the invoice to the client. And of course, here you have chances to mark up. But whereas when you are expanding from trust, there is no way you can mark up for trust payout or disbursement. But in general, for disbursements, whether it goes out of the trust or general, there are certain factors that you have to remember. How it was paid, who it was paid for, what it was paid for, and whether it was reimbursed from trust to general or general directly. Sometimes people could make an error by double billing themselves. So don't do that. Just follow the money. When you follow the money, everything feels very straightforward. You are dispersing from the respective account and getting the money reimbursed into that respective account. So you need to decide the portion or the amount that you are going to invoice them for and uh, what you are going to basically get paid for. So there, is a, there could be a difference and that difference is called as the profit margin. You can pre-bill, invoice, recover, get paid for yourself. So there's only four steps involved in here. Record the disbursement, decide before recording, decide what portion you're going to invoice your client and uh, what you need to report in your books. Pre-bill, send the invoice, recover the expense and get yourself paid if you have spent for it. As simple as that. We just need to break them into fragments, making sure that you are able to address each of them at the respective stages. It's more like a life cycle that you will be able to complete where you will incur a disbursement, you will record them, you will invoice them, you will recover them, and you will get paid for yourself. So it's a four or five step depending upon whether you use trust or general. Now, a lot of people, like I said, have trust some do not have trust. So that's why the general comes into a picture. But there are also sometimes, like I already mentioned in the previous slide, where you, even though you have trust, and even though you have money in trust, you cannot use the trust account because maybe there are certain types of expenses like bank charges or a postage, courier, and uh, your photocopies and other disbursements that are only supposed to be paid out of your business credit card or your general account or owner's pocket, of course. If you don't have a business credit card, you could use your own pocket, which is your own credit card, and obviously record it as spent from your own credit card. But even though I have a trust account, even though I have my client's money sitting in trust, why am I not using it? Because there could be a profit margin, because there are certain types of expenses that cannot go out of your trust account, like these bank charges and other stuff. That's why people who have trust very clearly hand out an instruction to their banks saying that, hey, do not debit my trust account for any bank charges. Any bank charges, take it out of the general account. So otherwise it becomes the bank error, right? So just connecting the docs um, so, so that you all can understand why not pay straight out of trust when I have money sitting in trust 
and why am I asked to pay out of general and then get it reimbursed from trust to be general? As simple as that, because trust should not carry any profit margin or any profit motive payouts. As simple as that. Literally, there's no other better words to put this into. So let's say there are some other direct billing such as code fee, application fee, and um, you know, there could be other consultancy expenses that are directly paid out of trust. Absolutely fine because there's no markup in there. You cannot mark up on a code fee or you cannot mark up on other filing fee, etc. So code fee or other kinds of fee that are easier to be paid from trust. So you could just pay that from trust and keep it simple because there's no worry about getting reimbursed that money into your general account later on. Just imagine you have $500 sitting in your trust account out of which $300 is your legal fee and $200 is your application fee. So you build a client exactly for that $500 and move the $300 as your legal fee from trust to be general, and you are done with it. As simple and straightforward it can be. So when paid from trust, there's no problem of recovering the expense. And it is not your money after all. You are expending something from trust which is belonging to your client directly. And end of the day, this will only reduce the requirements of your bookkeeping. Because if you're paying out of general, obviously you'll have to remember what you charged the client, what you got charged by the vendor. Um, you know, is there a profit margin in there? How do I maintain it? When did I pay? And other things, right? But if you're paying out of trust, there's quite a lot of things that is positive that helps you to save time, keep it simple, and reduce a whole lot of bookkeeping requirement over there. Now, while paying from general, what everything else can be paid from general. So, for example, even a court fee can be paid from general. It's not that it has to be paid only from trust, but it is simpler if it is paid from trust, if you have money sitting in trust, and if you have a trust account, obviously. But it doesn't mean that you cannot pay it from general. Okay, you understand? So paying from general is anything and everything. You can pay disbursements from general for any fee, any filing fee, any process fee, any bank charges, um, any photocopies, anything. Like literally anything can be paid from your general because there could be an instance where people might not have trust, but there can be no, there can be like zero chances where you might not have general because if there's no general account, means that. There's no bank account, right? Like you literally need a, that's the basic account. Uh, so you could make any expense from your general, record the expense, very similar manner to how you recorded in the trust. But here you can make sure the date, the amount that you're charging your client is a different, any different from what you paid. So which is called the markup portion. So are you marking up to charge your client a different amount than what you got what you got charged for, right? So record the amount, record the date, record taxes, method of payment, uh, especially what matter and client. You cannot record disbursement as a generic office expense nature in a generic office expense nature. It has to be recorded for that specific client and for that matter. A client can have two or three matters. A client can have multiple matters. But if there is a disbursement for a specific matter, it has to be paid out of that matter only. And if making sure that it was paid out of the right bank, credit card, the, the method of payments were recorded and other things were also verified in there. So that end of the day, you can move this money from trust to the general with appropriate information and recover the expense, make it yours. So to make that money yours after you 
See, now a lot of people could think disbursement is a lengthy process. No, trust me, disbursement is not a lengthy process, but it involves some data uh, entry and or maybe it involves some bookkeeping if I have to put it that way. So making sure that you are able to address all of these, including the client, the matter, you know, the information such as what is the kind of fees, when was it paid, who was it paid to, uh, how was it paid, that is the method of payment, and appropriate amount with taxes, without taxes, because all these the code filing fee, bank charges, they're all tax exempt. So making sure that you are adding things in an, uh, you're adding these amounts, including the appropriate taxes. Now, that's how you should record a disbursement, keeping in mind that, you know, you're going to be later on paid for it. And when to rec recover these disbursements? Like I said, some of you could have money in trust, you're directly moving that out of trust, paying it directly out of trust, and there's no question of recovering an expense because you have not spent your money. You have spent your client's money that was lying in trust. But when you are spending out of your own pocket or your general account or your business credit card, then arises the question of paying yourself. So make sure that you record the expense, the information with all the necessary details, such as, again, the date, amount, method of payment, the reference numbers, whether you're marking up or marking down. Now, don't ask me who marks down, but there are people who want to give discount to their client. They would love to mark down. Uh, so mark up, mark down, um, proper taxes included, Trust me, when you get the basics right, invoicing and recovering the disbursement is not a difficult job. Because once the information has been recorded properly, you raise the invoice, once you raise the invoice, your client is due to pay you, whether it is from the money that is lying in the trust and they pay you to recover the expense, or whether they pay you as a client payment to the general directly. If it is paid from your personal money, then one step additional, you get to transfer that to your own pocket from general accounts. Make sure you have all the ledgers and journals up to date as per law society guidelines. Make sure that you are downloading all these disbursement journals. Now, I know if you're using, in case if you're using ULA, you would see a compliance tab, then the compliance tab will have a general disbursement journal. Now this will show you all the disbursements made out of general account, and you will be able to see all the details such as who it was paid for, how it was paid for, what was it paid for, the amount before taxes, whether tax was exempt or not, and the amount after taxes, et cetera. Now, like I said, so recovering of expenses is really very straightforward. If you have recorded all these information, raised an invoice, sent to the client, transfer raise the money from trust to the general, or directly get it paid into the general account as a client payment. Now, there are some types of disbursements that would uh, be uh, very, very generic, but still, at least you get an idea as the samples, what are going to be made from trust, what are going to be the only general account, what can be done out of both trust and general. So one thing to remember on top of your mind, if there is anything with a profit margin, never from the trust, only from general, like travel time, mileage, unit rate, which is for photocopies, any expense with profit margin, any outsourced consultancy with profit margin. These are, these five items are only from general, as you see here in the bracket saying only general. Now, both from trust and general could be actuals, 
any recovery of expenses that are only actual amount. That is, an application fee is 200, you charge your client only 200. You can do it out of trust directly for 200, or you can do it out of your general and recover exactly only that 200. Two, that is like actuals. So recovering of expenses on actuals can be done out of both trust and general. Again, billable can be done out of both trust and general. Any outsourced consultancies that are basically at actual rate can be done at both trust and general level. So you can, as you all see here under the types of disbursements, there's nowhere it says why only no trust? Because not everybody has a trust account. So there can never be a disbursement that can only be made out of trust. What will people do if they don't have a trust? So only for that reason, we say both trust and general alert, or some things can be only made out of general account, the ones with profit margins, like you know, consultancy charges and other expenses, and the unit rate, which is photocopies, travel, mileage, etc. So those are the types of disbursements. Now, moving on to, okay, I have recorded under the respective client and mentor uh, the disbursement, what goes behind it, of course, like the method of payment, total amount, taxable, non-taxable, um, you know, and other details that goes into a disbursement that is being recorded. Now, what takes to make these ledgers and journal, general ledgers and journals that is being prepared? So now, it might not be honestly super useful to you, but these information that goes into the ledgers and journals are only ultimately what the law society wants to see. During audits, during, you know, any other practice reviews, etc. These ledgers and for both trust and general are reviewed, are taken seriously. Every transaction for every single client are directly recorded in here with the respective amounts, particulars, that is the description, whether it was a transaction to be done out of trust or general, and whether there's any balance in the trust or general respectively, whether the client owes or if there's anything that the lawyer or paralegal needs to refund, including the running balance. Everything is being noted here, date, particulars, amount, before taxes, after taxes, due balance, everything is recorded in a ledger. Now, you are not definitely going in and recording these ledgers. So from the data, what you give us gets converted into these ledgers, and which in turn is helpful for you when it comes to a review. Now, that's why we say if, when you are recording any disbursements, it's important to give a reference number, how was it paid for? If there's no reference number, it kind of makes it to think twice whether it's a genuine transaction or not. If there is a reference number, it would look more genuine. So that is the reason why we are asked to, you're asked to rather capture these disbursements with reference numbers so that you can go back into the bank can verify those transactions while especially reconciling and other things. Now, going on to journals, we saw ledgers. Now, what with journals? Leg so ledgers are in generic for receipts and payments. Uh, rather, uh, both are merged into one, right? So you have a client's trust ledger and a general ledger. So ultimately, both receipts and payments are merged for a single bank account, so trust and general. Now, when it goes to journal, journals are basically more drilled down version of what has happened in that specific client's matter, whether 
it is a receipt journal you can download a receipt journal and a disbursement journal separately under receipt journal you will see all the amounts paid by the client um, and received by the lawyer or the paralegal and uh, disbursement journal will show how uh, all the money was dispersed subsequently whether it was a trust transfer whether it was for legal fee or whether it was for reimbursing yourself for the disbursements and additional things. So during audits, of course, not only your ledgers, but also your journals are being reviewed. And uh, the best part with journals, like I already mentioned, is that it shows single type of activity. So when somebody wants to see only a disbursement journal, they can just pick the trust disbursement journal and general disbursement journal and see what was disposed out of the trust and what was dispersed out of the general, which will definitely capture the details such as the date, the method of payment, the amount, the description, what was it paid for, whether there's HSC included or not. So journals are also a record of all of these that we are seeing here, the method of payment, purpose, et cetera. And uh, they are single type in nature, and uh, they're maintained, of course, for both trust and general, for the ones who have both in their both trust and general bank accounts. Just like to stop here for a second to let all of you know that today is a CPD session going on, and we are talking about the topic disbursement demystified. I hope I'm not boring all of you, but trying to give the updates on how a disbursement needs to be made and how it needs to be recorded, managed well, and of course, recovered from either trust or general respectively. The topic has been entered here on the chat window by my teammate, Steph. She, you can also see that she's shared attendance links. So for the ones who have come in late, she keeps posting attendance links every 15 minutes once. She's posted a few times now already. So if any of you cannot access attendance link, please don't panic. Just ask on the chat and she'll be able to resend the guest. Thanking one or each one of you to join this call in a very short notice. Extremely sorry once again for sending a very delayed reminder today or a last minute reminder. We hope we don't repeat this in future. And uh, Thinking each one of you to show your support here on the call with us. All right, so quickly moving on to after disbursement journals, ledgers, there comes the fee book. Now, if you are again using EULA, you will understand, you will be able to relate to all of these journals, ledgers, fee book, and other reports that I'm talking about because. They are typically available in our compliance tab, so you don't have to go anywhere looking for these. But what, uh, what takes to maintain this, and what is there in disbursements and fee book? Now, the fee book definitely records the fee being billed for each client, but when you are billing the fee, Sometimes people also raise an invoice along with the disbursements that needs to be recovered from the clients. Remember I said where, you know, you can raise an invoice for a disbursement along with your legal fee or you can do a separate one for both. So if you are raising uh, an invoice along with the disbursement, this fee book has a separate column which is highlighted with a red box showing disbursements built. So fee book also records other things such as invoice numbers, HST, the client name, the other toll build. Everything is being recorded in the fee book. So this sample is absolutely Law Society approved. And uh, in case someone is doing a manual data entry, please make sure to maintain a fee book to understand, okay, every invoice, what was the information that we would like to capture on a fee book? The date of the invoice, the invoice number, the client name, and the total fee build, under the total fee build, uh, 
you will be able to see what was the legal fee build and the disbursement build. HST build will make it total build over here for you. So now that's what it takes to maintain a fee book and uh, it is definitely recommended for all of you and uh, going further now in case if someone is using a legal accounting software now what are the benefits what helps you in maintaining these events so obviously if you're having a software you are able to record the events as and when they happened and you are able to make close match with your bank records so your when your financial books and your bank statements are so close it's reconciliation becomes a very simple task and you maintain you don't have to literally maintain all of the above documents but the software will do that for you like literally those journals and ledgers imagine you know going back by years and how people would have maintained everything on a physical paper pen method it's definitely not possible anymore which is where the software plays a role and helps you to use it in a more efficient and an effective manner to account all of these and at the same time be compliant with law society i mean if for the ones who are not using new law please go ahead and sign up for a free trial and see how this magic works but i'd like to quickly uh, jump in to show how all of these works from a ula program uh, from this perspective right here what we discussed since we have close to another 15 to 20 minutes i'd like to show all of you how this works in our ula program sometimes the practical works better than the theory part. So let's just go in. I'm gonna quickly create a client in here. Let's say you are adding in all the other details later. We're gonna save and open a matter. And let's say this is a speeding ticket for Spider-Man. Uh, POA, Provincial Offenses, or Highway Traffic Act, which we want to put this under. We want to put in a billable time per hour, all of that. I'm not going to show you guys too much in detail because I want to focus on disbursements. Now, in new law, matter events is where you would be adding in the legal fee. Let's say the legal fee is entered here. Uh, this legal fee could be for consultation and uh, you're charging them for a global time of 30 minutes and you save it so which will come to 125 dollars less tax 141.25 there you go now let's say you've moved into disbursements now there are several types of disbursements that we discussed now i want to show all of you clearly what are these disbursements that have been out of made out of trust which is directly paid from trust and what is being paid from general and how can it be recovered that's what we're going to be seeing now before i proceed further i'd like to put in a small amount of retainer in here let's say we've had 250 dollars of retainer in here this particular client has email transferred so very important to add in the reference numbers and other details from everywhere so when someone gives you the, the retainer, you give them back a receipt. Click on that box to give the receipt. Right now, I'm not doing that. I'm focusing on disbursements. So going into this add new disbursement box. Trust me, when people get in here, they're lost. <laughs> now, but I tell them that a simple tip to not get lost is to follow your money follow your money if you follow the money you will know how you paid it and if you know how you paid it you can record it easily into the program 
let's say you follow the money, you see a $200 going out of your trust, and this $200 is for some application fee, filing fee. So how will you pay it? First thing is you follow the money, you understood it's from trust. So basically there is money in trust. Otherwise you would not be able to withdraw the money from trust. So you will go into withdraw from trust, take from trust, say probably 150 or 200, whatever was paid. And the method of payment, whether it was an online payment or a wire transfer or a certified check, enter in the details and say the description um, over here is to filing fee, pay to courthouse, and click on payments. So that's number one. That's your payment out of trust. So you got 250 in of which 150 is already gone out of your trust account. So this $100 remaining in your trust. That's why on the top you see a projected balance of 4125 because your billable time is 4125 with $100 left out in trust, your client still owes you 4125. Now, we're not stopping in there. Let's say add new disbursement. Okay, I saw how it was paid out of trust. It's so straightforward, you all see, see that, right? Date, amount, method of payment, reference numbers, what was it paid for, who was it paid for, verifying whether it's the trust account and submitting it. As simple as that, just five to six lines and you're done with the payment out of trust. There's no more bookkeeping requirement for this part. But here comes a little bit of work. If it is being paid out of the general account, what needs to be done? If it is paid out of the general account, again, how did you find out? Found out because you followed the money. Now, when you followed the money, you saw was paid out of general? No. It was paid out of business credit card? No. It was paid out of your personal credit card? Yes. Then it's own pocket. That's what we call here as cash in owner's pocket. So, and the other thing you have to understand is each type or nature of expense can be, should be rather recorded in a different manner. Now, let's say this expense that you made out of your general or credit card or own pocket was for mileage, for gas to visit the client, or was for photocopies, so which is units, or was an actual payment towards making the filing application fee. So whatever it is, follow the money and follow what is the nature of this disbursement. These are two things. Now, when you follow it, you'll be able to narrow down on the five or six options here that you're seeing under general. Mostly prepayment to disbursements are used if you're not paying out of bank directly, but if you're paid, paying it out of a prepaid account like TerraView, LDD, Unity, etc., where you know most of these prepaid accounts are being held and there's a little bit of deposit put in there and that deposit is used to make the disbursement. So it's called prepayment to disbursement. So this is not too often used, but I can, I've can i seen a lot of real estate lawyers using this prepayment to disbursement option a lot. Uh, so that's for them or at least for similar type of disbursements. Now, third party consultancy, again, always from general because there could be a markup included here. Let's say I've taken a translator, okay? And I pay, I'm charging my client $75 plus taxes for this translator, but I get charged $50 plus taxes for this translator. So you understand the difference? Now, why I can't pay it out of trust? Now, if I am paying out of trust, let me put it simply. Will I record 84.75 or 50? Which one is appropriate to be recorded under trust? No, I cannot record like that. I have to say what was paid out of, first of all, the money that went out of the respective bank account. So I follow the money and I find out it is paid out of my general account through email transfer, electronic fund transfer, or whatever was the method of payment. Now, the second thing I found out that this particular 
disbursement was marked up because I paid the translator only $50 plus taxes, $56.50, whereas I charged my client $75 plus taxes, which is $84.75. So this is a marked up. So we cannot disperse this from trust because there's a markup value here. So you just go and click on consultancy expense and enter in the details on the top portion. Now, this is the portion that you have to decide what is being charged to the client and what you have incurred. Now, what you have incurred is what you're recovering from them in this format of raising an invoice and either moving the money from trust to the general or directly getting it into the general account. Come down in here and I like more, you know, I like to give more information and I also recommend you all to try to fill in as much as information as possible because it takes you less than 30 seconds, but it gives you a very beautiful and complete report instead of an incomplete report where you wouldn't have details on who was it paid for, was the check number, whether it is a genuine transaction, why give room to your auditor or reviewer for all such details. Then just take a 10 second and enter in details such as, oh, this was given to James. Um, what was his full name? Maybe James Robert. Um, how is it paid? Check? No, I did an email transfer from my general account. Remember I said general? Yes, this is general. Great. So do you have an email transfer reference number? Oh, yeah. Well, it's there in my email. Let me just go and pick it up from that specific date. So here it is. When I'm going from the bottom, you all are all seeing it. So it's prepaid to disbursement. I said probably I didn't record this to show all of you. Maybe for this particular matter, it wasn't necessary, but I would love to show all of you how it works. So let's say this prepayment to disbursement is not going out of your bank account, but it is going from a prepaid account. Let's say this is something to do with um, some professional fee. And it was around $80 plus taxes. Now, did you pay for this $80 from your tax, uh, uh, $80 plus taxes from your bank account? Do you see any bank account in here like you saw the previous time? No, because remember I said this is going out of prepaid account. So you have a prepaid account for every type of prepaid expense. And this one is, let's say, this one is going out of your virtual document account. And in case it's going into ABC account and save it. As simple as that. So it keeps increasing. So now let's say another type of expense or disbursement here. When you click on pay disbursements from general cash, other accounts for, you know, any of the disbursement, you're able to do it as with the marker portion or mark down portion. Remember, if you were giving this person, last time we saw a marker portion, why not see a mark down portion? Let's say the bank charges you incurred were $60. This happens very rarely. Okay. Tax exempt. So what you incurred goes to the bottom portion. You just wanted to round it off and say 50 to your client of course, tax exempt. Now, this is the markdown example. Honestly, this happens very, very, very rarely when people want to show up, but this can also be zero. Basically, what you're doing is you're not charging anything to the client, but, you're, but you want to record the expense in your books. So this way you can do this. And again, let's say this was paid to my bank, RBC. Was it a check? No, was it direct debit? I couldn't find a number, so just say any or something not available or not applicable, and you have another disbursement here. Now, the last type of disbursement that I want to show all of you is the pay disbursements from general, but actuals, mileages, and units. Now, billable and actual are same. So let's say you're going to bill something, but at an actual rate. And there's no top or bottom portion here. There's nothing about, you know, um, marking up or marked down. So it's just one amount 
that you are charging your client and you are recovering for the same amount. Now, that could be in types of, let's say, filing fee or um, could be some application fee, LTB application fee or whatever. Let's say in this case, just application fee because it's a POA matter. And let's say this was $180, was tax exempt. Once you do that, there's no bottom portion because this means that this is the amount you're, gra uh, you're charging your client and uh, this is also the amount you're recovering into your books. You can say courthouse and you can say it was paid through an online payment. You can enter the reference number. In case you're doing a check, you can also print a check and save it. So there's no room when it comes to actual billable there's no room for markup or markdown. Now, this is what is called actuals. This is equivalent to using your trust account. As in, when you're using your trust account also, there is no markup or markdown. It's the actual amount you're using, right, when you're paying out of trust. Very similarly, even in general, you have the option to charge the actual amount and recover the actual amount. It's not always the markup, markdown concept, right? Now, these are the types of disbursements. Now, of which what needs to be recovered is not this 150, because this 150 was directly paid out of trust, which is the second line item you see here. But everything below that, the 75 plus taxes, 80 plus taxes, this 50, and this 180 plus, uh, I mean, this 180, no, no taxes. All of these needs to be recovered. So let's say you are invoicing this client just to save a little time. And you're going to do for both dockets and disbursements together because I also have a docket for 141.25, which is for the amount that you had billed for the legal fee. Now, once you're done with that, you could recover the amount with what is available in your trust. I think there's about $100 available because 250 was paid, as you all see, retainer. 150 was taken out to pay the disbursement directly out of the trust. But the remaining amount is due from the client. Now, this is what is called recovery of expenses. And this is what comprises of the amount $405 plus another 15 cents and the 125 over here. Overall, there's 446.40. And you're going to click on question mark. You very clearly see that, hey, your client owes you this money collect this money, let's say the client paid you this money directly into the general account. There's no question of bringing it into your trust account any further, but just bring it into your general because you have completed the work and now you've raised an invoice. So you just have to record this expense and recover it from the client. So now what is pending is that there's another $100 that is lying in the trust. You can just make this money yours by transferring the money from trust to the general and later on in Yuba or in any other program that you're using, please move from trust to the general as well so that you are giving yourself this money or rather paying yourself this money for what was paid out of your general account or your credit card. Now, if you come into your accounts and go into the general account, you will very clearly see all these transactions. I'll use the last five minutes to show you all the necessary documents. But before that, let me show you here for the translator and the trust, other general fee that you had made the money that has come in from the trust and the money that was directly paid by the client into the general account, the LTB application fee, bank charges, everything is recorded in here. Now, if I go to compliance tab, go to monthly compliance, I want to see the general disbursement journal just for today, just for today. Of course, if I had made anything else in here this morning, it might be recorded, but we will see for Spider-Man what was there in there. Okay, 
So now this is what we had charged and we had recovered overall. Okay. So you had a $50 plus taxes translator fee with the taxes. Then there was an NTV application fee, $200. Then there was a professional fee with taxes. There is an application fee. There was a bank charges. All put together, the total amount is over here. So you have paid, the method of payment, who was it paid to, what was it paid for, the actual expense with HST or taxes, respectively, with the total. Uh, that's what a disbursement payment journal would show all of you to verify. Okay, in case this particular client, Spider-Man, has not paid you this amount, you can go back in here, verify, and send the invoice copy to them and ask them to pay. Now, I have also dispersed something from the trust, which was that $150. Now, where can I see that? So when you go to clients, trust payments, now journal, right? So journal will show me in depth for today's date, instead of even all clients, I want to just do for Spider-Man and download. You would see that $150 that went out, and of course, the $100 was trust transferred. So there's a trust payout the certified check for the application fee, and the $100 was trust transferred for the legal fee, out of the $250 that was there in the trust. There is another one that says expense book. Let's go by that and see what was there, recorded in there as an expense, whether the bank charges and the other things were are recorded as an expense. You see here for Spider-Man, the translator fee went out of the general account, and then the professional fee went out of the general account. The application fee went out, and the bank charges went out. So now the expense book also is very similar to your disbursement journal, but here it only shows all the expenses that was made out of your general bank account today. All right, so just want to show you one last document and wrap it up here. I know we are a little time bound here. Just give me one second. So I want to show you all how the fee book looks for us. This one? All right, so as we all saw in the presentation for the fee book, would be able to see in here that for Spider-Man, the legal fee is 141.25, great. And the rest of the disbursements, all the five disbursements that we made from the general account are over here. You want to compare it? You can just go and look at your invoice that got downloaded. You have five disbursement for here and one here, which is the hundred and fifty dollars. And you have the legal fee, which is one forty one per point two five. So all of it is seen on your fee book. So there are these five. Has the date as the name of the client, the description, whether it is legal fee or disbursement. If it is disbursement, what is it, whether it's translator fee or professional fee, bank charges, application fee. What was the fee? What was the HST? What is the total everything in here under the fee book? Just for you to verify all of this, end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year, making sure at regular intervals you are keeping a tab on what came in and what went out, what needs to be recovered, what needs to be paid for you from the client, and what you need to pay yourself from the general team, your own pocket, if you have spent anything from your own pocket. All right, so at the top of the hour, uh, extending or opening the floor here for all of you to ask any questions. I hope I was able to make a justice to this 
topic. And uh, if all of you have any questions, feel free to let us know on the chat window, and we'll be happy to assist you. Just to keep the recording short, I will be turning off the recording in another couple minutes. But if there are any useful questions, I would love to answer them and then stop the recording so the ones who are watching it later it will be helpful for them. So just making sure that all of you have understood the basics of disbursements, that you follow the money and you record it into your books appropriately as you have spent and recovering the expense, which is either from the trust to the general or into the general directly. And if you have paid it out of your personal pocket, you need to make sure to reimburse yourself after that from your general account. And ensuring all of these journals and ledgers and fee book are being recorded and reported from time to time if you're using their software like ULaw, these reports are readily available for you upon you make the entries. So make sure that you are all time compliant by using a program like ULA. If you are not using ULA, I request all of you to sign up for the trial and we'll be happy to guide you from there. Since uh, none of you have asked any questions, I'm just going to stop the recording right here. Um, so it's 31st of the March, Friday, gentle reminder to the ones who have not submitted your Law Society annual report to please make sure to submit it before 12 tonight. And uh, wishing you all the very best for the upcoming quarter, almost into second quarter of the year and uh, looking forward to April. Uh, we don't have a webinar next Friday. It's a good Friday and uh, we are off, but uh, we are going to come back with more new topics for the second quarter. The topics will be updated next week and uh, you can view it on our webinar platform. And uh, your, if you all have any questions, I welcome you all to register for info.ulawpractice.com webinar. And uh, you can all email us on support at the rate Thank you.